G'day AAEMCA, we're here with Professor Charles Antaki, Professor of uh, Language and Social Psychology at the Loughborough University, talking about applied conversation analysis. Yeah, sure. I applied CA has really been there from the start. Uh, anybody who reads the Sachs lectures, and it's of course a great read as you know, and people who start with CA often go to Sachs for inspiration, and there's inspiration on every page. Remember that the very first page of it is taken from his experiences in an emergency psychiatric um, telephone uh, service where he's listening into calls and seeing how it is that the caller gets her or himself onto the service of something which is actually a rather delicate issue about psychiatric illness. Mm. So if we're taking applied CA to be getting engaged with some kind of agency where there are practices which deal between two kinds of people, let's say the practitioner and the client, then really at the start, Sachs himself was engaged with that. Now, Sachs's interest was not in changing the practices of the agency. So he wasn't applied in that sense. What he was doing was building up a whole reservoir of practices such that things could emerge from it. Mm -hmm. And he went to, amongst other places, a psychotherapy um, discussion group, the psychiatric place, uh, all kinds of other institutions. But mostly he was there, like he was anywhere, simply collecting information. Now, you spool on a bit, mm. you spool on quite a long time in fact, yeah. and you get to people who call what they're doing applied CA, which Sachs never did, because mm. he was interested, as I say, in getting just material for fundamental or basic CA along with, of course, such people as uh, Emmanuel Shegloff and Gail Jefferson, and those were the pioneers doing this, collecting the, the raw material. Then, as I said, we spool on in time, and we get to people who are now willing to say there's going to be some kind of difference between institutional talk and non-institutional talk, which, again, was blatant from the very beginning. So what do we do? Do we call it institutional CA if we use CA's insights? to explain what's happening between a practitioner and a client, or do we just call it any LCA? Well, we call it something. Institutional doesn't quite fit, perhaps, because not everything that's being done is being done within the confines of some recognisable institution. For example, if you look at the interaction between a therapist, a psychotherapist, and a client, is that institutional talk? Yes, it is, insofar as there's some grand institutional thing like psychotherapy. Mm. But that institution is different from, let's say, um, a, a hospital, where there are institutions, where it's an institution in the more obvious, in the official sense. There are guidelines, there are regulations, there are practices which are written down and enshrined in some sort of book somewhere. So if you're not wanting to call things like psychotherapy institutional. Well, let's choose some other word. And a word like applied CA acknowledges that there's lots of times and places where people march to different drums from ordinary conversation, and yet they're not all within some sort of absolutely fixed or relatively fixed official regulated institution, hence applied CA. So could you unpack uh, institutional a little bit more? What is the sure, concern? sure. I think like many of us, we'd go to talk at work, yeah. which is the sort of pioneering uh, or the first time it got systematised into uh, a body of work which took as its theme the asymmetries between the practitioner and the client mm. or the service provider and the service providee, interviewer and interviewee. And the thing that Heritage and Drew put their finger on was these asymmetries in, let's see if I can remember them, it's a bit of a test, I might well <laughs> fail it, right? So we're talking about asymmetries in turn design, mm. turn allocation, and agenda. Uh, there are two others which I can't remember, but those will do us for the moment. What that sounds, you mean turns at talk? Yes, I do. And you can see that, for example, in a courtroom case, when, and don't forget that Paul Drew did some very early work on courtrooms and how they differ from ordinary interaction, there is pre-allocated turns. The judge starts, and he or she nominates the next person to speak and you don't speak out a turn, literally in this case. Mm. Uh, and the turn design is very difficult, different as well. In institutional talk, uh, the kind of talk that applies here looks at, certain people have got rights to ask questions and certain people have obligations to give answers. So there are these asymmetries which I think 
is taken by people since Druid heritage to be the marker of something which we could call institutional CA. Okay. And so, so what does um, like doing applied CA mean nowadays? It means a whole bunch of things. It really does. And the way I see it now, which is really something which we can look on now looking backwards, is a variation, a gradation along the lines of engagement with the practitioners and the service providers. Uh, at the one end, there are people, uh, well, all of us can do this at different times. So it's not like different researchers do different things. All of us do different things at different times. But you can receive or get hold of or be donated tapes from somewhere yeah. and say, right, I'll never engage with the practitioners. I've got these, this gift of these tapes from, let's say, a copy shop or a, uh, uh, a call centre or um, uh, a, a classroom. And they don't want me to go back and talk to them. And I'm just here because it's more data and it's data about this asymmetric relationship. And I can see through it how it is that the classroom is brought off, how the insurance salesman does her or his business and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I can just carry on building up the dossier of practices that basic CA does, but in an applied setting. So that's maybe where it started, if you like. Mm -hmm. And as we've built up an enormous dossier of practices by which people do their businesses. Everything from pilots in cockpits to marital counsellors and yeah. everything in between. All right, so that's one uh, and the thickest part of the pyramid. Well, pyramid, I don't mean in the sense of progression or upwards. I mean, you know, the thickest part of the forest, if you like. Mm. And there's another bit of the forest, which is thin at the moment, but I think growing, where you think to yourself, okay, and we've done all of that, but can we engage at least to some degree with the practitioners who provided us with these data and or, this is still sparser, with the clients who took part in this engagement with the services? Now, that's very unusual, so, but it's mostly the practitioners. I'll come to the point why it might be in a moment. But if you engage with the practitioners, you can engage again in a series of gradations of degrees of engagement. Mm. Uh, at the very least, you can say to them, they can say to you and you can say to them, we're interested in what you found. Let's have a chat about it. Mm. And, oh, how interesting that is, and thank you very much, and now goodbye. Or you write a report for them, for them and it, it's there on their institutional books, and it's available to them should they want to use it. Or you can just turn up the volume a bit, or they have, might have a more training interest. They might say, okay, you've, you've done that. You've identified things that we do. And we could look at that and say to ourselves, we the practitioners, say the psychotherapists. Mm. They might say, okay, now we've never thought about that before. We've got our own notions about what happens in therapy. We have training in therapy. And sometimes we look over videos of what we do with each other. But you're looking at these videos and taking them apart in ways which are more minute and more detailed than we do. And there's a point of some bridge between the two of us. We don't talk that way, but you do. Mm. But what we can do is to see whether you can, you are translating some of our practices into such detail that we can use that detail to feed back to our training so as to improve what people are doing.